Hello guys, so in this video I want to talk about Mobius transformation and I'm going to give you a definition and list a couple of really important properties. So first let's consider like the extended complex plane. So in other, word, uh, in other words, I'm going to take a complex plane with uh, a point which I'm going to call infinity. And in my previous video I discussed that uh, a complex plane and a point is going to be like the same as, or in other words, diffeomorphic uh, to S2. And it's going to be diffeomorphic to S2 via stereographic projection. Uh, and so let's give a definition of a uh, Mobius transformation. So I'm going to say that a map from C hat to C hat is a Mobius transformation if that map can be written as a fraction of AZ plus B over CZ plus D, where A, B, C, and D are real numbers, such that AD minus BC is not going to be equal to zero. So we can see that this is like the definition of a Mobius transformation. So every time when you're given a map or that is represented as a fraction with those uh, with that property that AD minus BC is not equal to zero, that's Mobius transformation. And we have two properties. So the first property is that F, um, in other words, a Mobius transformation is going to be a conformal map. And the second property is that if you're going to consider the set of all Mobius transformations and you're going to take a binary operation which is given by uh, uh, function composition, then that set with that binary operation is going to be a group. And again, like uh, your coefficients a, b, c, and d are going to be real numbers. Let's talk about first property, a conformal map. So what is a conformal map? In, in my next video, I'm going to give you a definition of conformal map, uh, and I'm going to actually prove that f is conformal map. But the idea is that we're going to take like any open subset of a complex plane, or in other words, a complex plane itself, and the way how we're going to deform our complex plane, that if we're going to take like any two vectors and angle between them, then that angle is going to be preserved. Or another word, conformal map is a map that pre preserves angles. But it's not necessary that it's going to preserve uh, the length of our vector, as we see in uh, pre picture on the left, that vector of length 1 is going to map to, to a vector of length 2. Okay, and our second property that I want to show that my uh, set of Mobius transformations is going to be a group. So let's just, uh, before we go into show that, let's try to think about Mobius transformation from this different perspective. So if I'm going to take a function which is a Mobius transformation, so AZ plus B over CZ plus D, then think about that function as a matrix times uh, column vector Z1. And you can see if you're going to multiply that matrix and that column vector, you're going to have AZ plus B over CZ uh, plus D. So you can think about that column vector as our Mobius transformation itself. So let's take our set and we're going to say that uh, our set G is a group, if first G is going to be closed under uh, function composition. So, so in other words, if you're going to take any two elements, or in other words, any two function F and G belonging to big G, which are Mobius transformation, and in other words, that we can write our function as fractions of the form A1, Z plus B1 over C1, Z plus D1, and the same for A2, B2, C2, and D2. And then I want to show that F composition G of Z is also going to be Mobius transformation. In other words, it's going to be a fraction of the form A3Z plus B3 over C3Z plus D3. And uh, what are going to be our coefficients A3, B3, C3, D3? So first, you can just plug in G of Z instead of component of Z and do simple algebra. And observe that our A3, B3, C3, D3 are going to be the elements of A1, A2 plus B1, C2, for example, for A3, and then the corresponding elements we're going to have for B3, C3, D3. Or in other words, if you're going to use our like representation of Mobius transformation in terms of matrices, then you can just need to multiply two matrix as composition of two functions are going to be given as multiplication of two matrices, if you will think about functions as linear transformation. And again, this is going to be informal uh, proof. Uh, but formally, you just need to do your simple algebra. And another property that we need to show is that we need to show that a three d three minus b three c three uh, doesn't equal to zero because this is like the definition of one based transformations that our coefficient should satisfy that identity. But think about that as we have a matrix C is equal to A times B, and we need to show the determinant of C is not equal to zero, but the determinant of C is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B, which are non-zero. So that's why the original determinant of C also non-zero. And we showed our first property in order like uh, to prove that G is going to be a group. Okay, so what is our second property? So for our second property, we have that G must have an identity element. And you can check that identity element in this case is going to be just identity function f of z is equal to z, which is a Mobius transformation where like obviously like one is not equal to zero. Okay, for our third property, we need to show that uh, 
composition is going to satisfy associativity. But since our binary operation is given as composition of function, then that holds automatically as composition is uh, satisfied. Composition of the function satisfies associativity, like we can say, like basically by construction. Okay. And our fourth uh, property that we need to show is that every element of our group sorry, of our set G, in other words, uh, our element F has an inverse G. So in other words, F composition G and G composition F is going to be equal to identity element. And to show that, I just going to take some uh, W, which is equal to Z, and I want to kind of reverse it. And reverse it by, I'm going to replace Z and W and solve that equation for W back. And you can see that I'm going to obtain the uh, element negative Z times D plus B over Z times C minus A. And you can see if you're going to plug in the W inside as our G inside of a function F, you're going to get an identity. And also we can see that our coefficient negative D, B, C, and negative A, their determinant is going to be equal than zero as that matrix is going to be exactly the inverse matrix of matrix A, B, C, and D. Okay, and that's it. So basically since we found our element G, which is inverse of F, and we have the determinant of our coefficients is non-zero. Then we proved our last property, or in other words, the set of all Mobius transformations is going to be a group.